and don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true, and the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're gonna give up. So just go and do it, try, learn from it. You, you know, you'll fail at some things. That's a learning experience that you need so that you can take that on to the next experience. Um, and don't let people who you may respect uh, and who you believe know what they're talking about, don't let them tell you it can't be done. Because often they will tell you it can't be done, and uh, it's just because they don't have the courage to try. You have to have an emotional investment in what you're doing. If you don't love what you're doing, um, failure is pretty much guaranteed. Success is not guaranteed by any means, but failure is m much more likely if you don't love what you're doing. You know, one of the things that I do is I question a lot of things. Um, and you can do that in a good way and in a bad way, but hopefully if you try to get people to motivate why they're doing something and their way of thinking, you know, the worst thing you can end up with is a situation where um, you get told, well, this is the way it's always been. That's the worst ever. That's a non-answer. Instead, ask yourself, you know, given everything you have today, is there a way we can make this better? If you're not coming up with 10 ideas a day, that's why I have this thing. If I'm not coming up, when I'm filling up this page every single day, then my idea muscle will atrophy. And I started this in 2001, and I still do it every single day. Like, you have to come up with ideas every single day, or the idea muscle atrophy. The good news is, after about six months of doing that, you're like a machine. Like, people get surprised at how many ideas you could just have anywhere. But understand that naturally nobody is interested in your idea. The world would care less, and you have to persuade them, and you have to show that you're the one person out there that can do it. When it comes to changing the world, what I learned from Steve Jobs is, if you believe in a Macintosh, if you believe in iPhone, iPod, iPad, if you believe enough, then you will see it, because other people will believe in it. Other people will create software, other people will create products. So you need to foster the belief in what you are dreaming so that it becomes a reality, which is very different than saying, I don't expect anybody to believe it until I see it. You need people to believe it before they can see it. Don't necessarily think that you have to have the home run and the huge Apple computer on your first start. I spent a long time in my life with skills, just building little devices for fun. For fun is one of the key things, because that drives you to think and think and think and make it better and better and better than you ever would if you're doing it for a company. Build things at first for yourself that you would want. For somebody aspiring to you know, take things to the next level or to even you know, surpass their wildest dreams, there's always going to have to be an element of luck, but I think more important is putting yourself in a business that can be ubiquitous, that, that, can, that really doesn't have limits. Because otherwise, there's always going to be a grind to it, but if, if the business, if, if, if it can't be something that you can visualize every business using or every consumer using, it's going to be tough to scale, to be big enough, or to have the perceived value. You want an idea about what you can say. I know it sounds like a bad idea, but here's specifically why it's actually a great one. You want to sound crazy, but you want to actually be right. Because when you're trying to differentiate, when you're trying to do something different, there's going to be that gut moment, that gut sense. Is this right? Is this not right? If you're not, if you're not having doubt, you're not pushing the boundaries far enough. The hardest thing to do is start. Um, you have all these ideas and everyone has an idea, but it's really about executing the idea and building the idea and attracting other people to help you work on the idea. That is the biggest challenge, but the, the way to begin is to get the idea out of your head, draw it out, you know, um, talk about it, program it if you're a programmer, or make it if you're building something. Like you don't have to be the best, but you have to be dangerous, right? You have to learn just enough to be dangerous to build an idea, concept it, and show it to the world. And then it turns out there are lots of other people, including all 170 employees that work at Instagram, who are much better at doing all that stuff than I am. 
but you need to find people who can, you know, be drawn to the idea that you build, and and then they end up taking it and um, and making it even better. Yeah, we simply seek criticism. Uh, a a well a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold, um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends. If you're not utilizing an online community, then you're at a disadvantage to those who are. You can be asking online communities what they think about your ideas, or if they have any advice with what you're working on. Not only will you hear from people who are passionate about the subject, but you'll be hearing from people all around the world, each with their own experiences and stories that can help you. And there are a lot of people from whom we can learn a lot, and I think like, you know, the one piece of advice is like, don't underestimate anyone you come across. Ever. Right. Like, whether they're, you know, uh, a, a blue collar worker waiting for the bus, or they're, you know, helping you at your, they're the server or bartender at the restaurant, or they're a lower ranking employee. I mean, the smartest leaders I've ever seen have always gone around the room and asked for everybody's opinion. Most startups that fail do it, ultimately, because they did not make something that people wanted. They made something that, um, you know, that they thought people would want. Either in denial about it, about you know whether it was actually any good, um, or somebody else came along and made something that people wanted even more. <laughs> and so it's not just about doing focus groups. It's not just about you know, double checking your vision. It really is about integrating this concept of testing our ideas rigorously throughout the product development process, throughout the marketing process, even as we scale. But what we really need to do is think about what is the smallest possible test that I can run for this idea, for this concept, for this theory, get it out there and get customers using it. Because your customers are gonna be the ones to tell you if it's really working or not. You should find a great partner no matter what it is that you're doing. Um, and you should look for someone who is very high intelligence, uh, very high energy, very high integrity. And you need all three of those. You can't compromise with any one of them. Otherwise, you'll end up with uh, either someone who's not smart company is simply a group of people um, and uh, as a leader of people uh, you have to be a great listener, um, you have to be a great motivator, uh, you have to uh, be very good at praising and looking for the best in people. Um, you know, people are no different from, from flowers, if you water flowers they flourish, if you um, praise people they flourish and, um, and that's a critical attribute of, um, of a leader. progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the walls. The two things we really zero in on on people are, um, you know, two things. They sound simple, they end up being very difficult. Um, courage and genius. Um, courage is the one we talk about a lot because it's the one that people can learn. Um, uh, you know, courage, courage, which is to say not giving up in the face of adversity, um, you know, just being absolutely determined to succeed, you know, is something that you can, you can like force yourself to do. It can be very painful, you can force yourself to do it. The genius part is a little bit hard to force yourself to do. Um, you know, courage without genius might not get you where you need to go, but genius without courage almost certainly won't. Optimism has a place, but I think even more so for the first time entrepreneur, it, you need to be pragmatically pessimistic. What I mean by that is, you need to define all of the worst case scenarios in terms of financial loss, time loss, etc. Look at what you will learn if that happens and accept and come to terms with that before you ever start. If you don't do that and you go straight into battling the world, trying to conquer the world with rose colored glasses on, 
first time you hit a major hiccup, you're going to become really demoralized and you will quit. If you don't love it, you won't make it through the long period of pain that is inevitable. So uh, make sure that you take care of yourself during the process. Make sure that you take care of uh, your mental health, your physical health while you're doing it because it's a long road.